Happy Saturday, everyone. So back for a very exciting project. First of all, I want to thank everyone again for joining in and supporting me getting to 10K. And we did the drawing last week. All of the um, winners were listed below the the video in the description area and most of you have reached out and um given us your necessary information shipping information a few of you haven't so if you're seeing this video and didn't think that you would ever win anything you have and so you might want to just go over there and check um because if not we'll keep it open for another you know five days or so and if not then we'll just go and do a drawing again um because you know how that is just can't have it going but for so long so we've given everyone a couple of weeks to respond okay secondly um we're going to be working on the month of november we're going to be working on our advent journal talked a little bit about it last week um i was told last week that i had put it upside down <laughs> and i did and I had to laugh when I saw the comment and I went back and looked. I'm like, yep, because I'm so used to turning things like this with my old camera set up. And I haven't gotten out of that, you know, that muscle memory of just doing that. So um, with my new equipment and stuff, I don't have to do that any longer. So anyhow, my apologies. But this is an Advent book. I did this a couple of years ago. I normally do one of these every year. They're just fun. And it's a great way just to tuck little notes and um, cards that we get. You know, maybe someone, you know, early in the month, you know, said something sweet or we had, saw an inspirational quote or something like that. I always just like to write it in, um, in there. Um, if you do uh, an advent calendar or something with your family, this is a great place to put those things in. If not do your own advent journaling maybe journal your art things that you did each day of the month maybe do your own personal you know 25 days um of what you've done in the studio that's always fun my sister always does these really incredible um gift tags um that she puts on the gifts i just love them and she sends them to us because we don't live in the same state so that's mine this is my daughter's. I save them all. I love them. I just think they're so beautiful the way she does them. <clears throat> so those get stuck in my journal. This is my youngest daughter, Zion. I know my son's in here somewhere. Here he is. So they're all just, and she puts a little thing on like, Miles, let your light shine. Mine said shine bright. Zion says, oh, what fun. So she always puts a little message and stuff. So they're always the best tags. Um, so stick that in there. Christmas cards that you receive, special cards. All this can get stuck in your Advent journal. And then, like, the Christmas is preserved, or the holiday season. I'm sorry, because we don't all necessarily sell Christmas, celebrate Christmas. But the holiday season um, is captured in one little place. And, you know, you know generally... It's everywhere, and we want to keep them, but they're everywhere. And I started doing this because it was a great way for me to capture the holidays and have it all in one place and not have it floating around and thinking, oh, I'm going to do a project, oh, I'm going to do a project, <laughs> and you never do the project. So we're going to be making one similar to this um, this year. I'm going to do it a little differently. The pages I'm going to show you are going to be done the same way. It's this little system I've come up with creating these tuck pages. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. Um... So today we're going to do two things. We're going to do a setup. I'm going to talk about the project in the first half of this video. So you know what to expect. Not the first half, the first 10 minutes. And then the next part of it, we're going to be doing our glazing and our jelly prints and what have you on my November printables, which I designed specifically for this Advent book. But they're very diverse. You guys are going to see there's some treats in here and you can use them all through the year with all of your various projects. But I really... Um, did a pack so that it would be easy to just get right in and do this advent um, journal. Okay, so the inspiration for these are these old books that I have. I have a collection, quite a bit of um, these very old books. Like this one is from the 1800s. I've had these for years. I've collected them over time. Lots of just yummy old pages and stuff in them. So the way I came up with the the idea for this book was that, I mean, for the Advent, to do it this way, is because I was working on 
pulling my January printables together to give you guys loads and loads of old um, documents, you know, different styles, you know, different uh, languages. There'll be French, Spanish, German, um, Dutch, <coughs> English. So um, I've just been pulling through that. And as I was doing that, <coughs> I come across all these beautiful end pages in the books. This book had um, doesn't have the end pages here, but it had a beautiful cover that over the years, this was um, marble paper, but it's, you know, long since faded. But a lot of my books have these end pages in them. So I thought, wow, those would be great for the pages of the Advent Journal. Um, and it also gives a double source because now you can use these. I use these a lot in my various book structures. Let me see if I can pull this out real quick. This is a little bit of a show and tell. So um, just letting you guys know. I have in here. Here it is. Um, I'll show you one book style that I have. Where I use... I use these um, marble papers throughout the year. So those of you have seen this, many of you have seen this Jacob's Ladder style book that I've done. If not, it's over on Instagram. I think I'd do a real quick version of it. But those of who are following me in Patreon, we've done this uh, structure a number of different ways. But I've actually taken and used the marble papers to create e each section of this book. So there's so many ways you can use these papers. I also um, stain them. I age them. And we're going to do some of that. So I'm going to show you how I age the papers. We're going to do that today to get this really yummy kind of old, you know, been through it kind of look to it. You can see the staining on it. So, and then this one I used a little short book cover um, to create the... Um, just like a, a, you know, a loose book cover. So there's a lot of different ways you can work with these pages in your book. So, um, and of course in collaging and all kinds of things. Okay. So let me move these off. Okay. The other thing I wanted to show you about this. So there's a lot of different, like this book right here, you see how the covers are, um, have the marble paper on them. That's how, let me move these out the way. They're so delicate and brittle. They just, have to be so careful with them but I love them so this book was originally like that it had a full marble paper on here that's just faded with the leather on the spine and this one had the leather on the corners um, inside you see the book pages it's this old world kind of look to it it's a particular style of marbling that was done in the 18th and the 19th century and now like a lot of these techniques have actually I mean, people still do them, but it's not widely known how to create this sort of rippling on the water when you put your, it, it's a whole process. But, um, and so uh, there's more contemporary styles of marbling as well. So I also was really wanting to go back in and try to find more of this style, 18th and 19th century marbling, because I wanted the Advent book to have a very old world, you know, that old world feel to it and look to it when we were done. So I wanted to be consistent with the style of marbling. And I want to share this with you guys just briefly like that so that you can do your own research to see, okay, what type of style, of, if, if you're interested, um, what type of style of marbling, how do they look different? Um, because there are in different genres and different periods, you know, like typeface, you know, there's certain typeface that looks Art Nouveau. There's certain typeface that looks, you know, um, mid-century mod modern or whatever. So same thing with a lot of the genres of art and it's nothing and it holds true for marbling so we're going to be working our covers are going to be this style um where it's going to be a book board we're going to use two book boards we're not going to be binding them because we're also going to be using these rings um so you know start looking for these things or you can just order them off of amazon i'll try to put a link but we're going to be using just big rings like this three of them about this size that way um it'll be a lot of room in the pages for things to expand to move around these are approximately two inches or i guess the inside diameter is an inch and a half 
bring. The full is an inch and three quarters. I guess they probably call these an inch and a half. Um, so we'll have three of these. So if you have them, start pulling your stuff out. If not, I'll you know make a put a link for them. So we're going to use those. Just give you an idea. We're going to use just book board. It can be anything. You can use old cardboard from the back of your um, your journaling pads and stuff that we get. This is just an old board that came off of one of my artist lofts books from uh, my journaling. So I will probably take the center out and just use the boards. And then we're going to take and do this technique over with a little bit of leather, um, some of our marble paper, whatever you choose your cover to be, <clears throat> and then doing these ends on them. So we're going to replicate this look in on, you know, contemporary material. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So I just want to give you an overall I, all idea of what this project is going to look like. We just finished the Coptic in, in um, I had it over here. I was just getting ready to move out of the way. Because, you know, guys, I've done a lot. We do a lot of, in my Patreon, on my behind the scenes level, BTS level, we have all year long been studying book arts and all all the different major book styles um, and are over there. And we've just been building our, our, our um, skill sets. So this is Coptic. We just finished doing that this this week. It's a beautiful, fun binding. So um, I'm a master book binder. And what does that mean? It means that 30 years ago, <laughs> when book arts were being revived, I um, learned in the apprenticing fashion. So I learned from other book artists that had book studios that were reviving it as well. Some from older book um, binderies that were more um, production kind of binderies and that didn't want the art form to die. So what it means is that you normally, back the way, you know, we kind of came to this was you apprentice under master book binders, and then you have to do a stint of just doing a lot of production binding by hand. Um, I worked for a while, uh, I volunteered at the Library of Congress in the Rare Book Room, and did a lot of maintenance-y type of things and learned a lot about book structures and how to how to handle very old, old books. So there's a process that you go through to become very proficient in book arts bindery. So when I say, you know, like sometimes when you see people maybe refer to it or you hear me refer to it, it's a really old world process. The same thing with paper making. I'm a master paper making in, maker in, um, in Western and Eastern styles because the same, I went through the same process, you know, years and years of just learning and studying. And there's things that I don't know. There's things I'm still learning, but most of the techniques I'm familiar with. If I'm not proficient in them, I'm, I'm highly familiar with them and can, um, and, and can do it. So, yeah. So a lot of the things that I'm teaching you is a combination of like high and low. I like to let you know a lot about something just so you're familiar with it. And if you go want to go deeper, then you can go do your own research. But not so much that other people are saying, I just want to do the book, Rob, and I don't really care about whether or not there's different styles of marble paper. <laughs> Well, I'm here for you guys too. We're just going to jump in and get it done. I'm also going to be using some of the, 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 goss, the Joss paper. So if you guys have some of this or, you know, are prone to want to put your hands on it. I get this mine in Chinatown. It comes in the silver and the gold. And I just don't have any gold in front of me, but I will be using gold. I thought this would be really festive in our books. And I also jelly print with this. Um, and so I probably will be showing you this as well. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm leaning towards. So if you have some of this, grab it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, and if you want to run, if you have a Chinatown next to you and you can run down and get it, please do. Okay, I'm going to show you November printables. And then we're going to do some glazing jelly printing. And we're also going to work with the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide in frayed, uh, frayed burlap and pumice stone. I use these two to do a um, an aging process. I think I did it um, here on YouTube uh, a few months back. I showed you guys this, and um, but we're going to do it on these papers, um, and it's just a neat way to make everything really look more old and more aged. And you know that's what I'm about, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start off with the distressing first, and then I finish by layering the um, 
doing the glazing with the jelly print. That's the process. So if you have um, these, by all means, grab them. If you don't, I know a lot of you have them. If you have other colors in the Distress Oxide, like in browns um, and things like that, you could use those. You just use you know small amounts of it. You'll be able to test and play around with it. If not, if you don't have any of these, then you'll be able just to use um, some water spray bottle and maybe just a, a spray bottle with a little bit of coffee and tea in it just to do a little staining and you'll be able to come walk away with a similar process. So there's a number of ways we'll talk about in doing this. Okay, let me show you the pack. So this is just a duplicate. Um, so I'll start off with this. I printed my pack out front and back. So I'll just show you this one starting off. This is the full pack. It's 27 pages. 10 pages of marble paper. So you can see this the wavy background line in there. That's that's indicative of 18th and 19th century um, marbling. So I picked reds and greens and blues, little bit of purples, you know, sort of holiday colors, but not overly um, red and green, you know, just sort of a, a feeling for the holiday colors. I double sided mine and you'll see why, because when we're, since we're making book pages, um, we want the front and back to be available in the style that we're going to be doing. So it just, if you can do two sided printing, that is great. If you can send it over to, um, FedEx Kinko's or Office Max or one of those, you're, you're free to send these files and have them printed outside. There's, um, I, I allow for that. So, because I've been asked that before, so I just thought I would say it publicly here so everybody would know. You can definitely send the files or send them to your friend or a relative who has a printer. It's fine. Okay, so these are the these will be the 10. We have this red one, which is just yummy. This blue. Um, this green and a beautiful feather pattern. This is another this beautiful feathering. I just think those colors just look so nice together. Here's another red. We can see that old world style again. This is, I love this one too. This is off of a very old book page um, inside. This is a, just a really pretty turquoise -y. Um I, I know that I had a lot of sort of not too bright in here because old world is not really, really bright. But I know there's those of you who really like color. So I thought between the red and this one, it would give you the pops. But it wouldn't be so much that if you want more sub subdued palette, it would be there. So I really spent a lot of time just trying to select the right ones to make for this edition. That would work across the board with a lot of different um, colored palette tastes. And even the ones that are brighter, when we you can knock them back a little bit more with um, when we do the the staining if you want you can do more or less you know so we can alter those this is a really nice salmony color with uh with the green in there and this is a really pretty kind of like periwinkle so it's a purpley blue with the red the golds and the greens and then this green is a nice lively green i think they all just work well together which is what I was going for. So it kind of took me a while to put this collection together. I had a lot of ones that I went through to make this decision, but I really feel like at the end, I really liked how these full pages look. So I did them front to back, but you have 10 of those. And then, yes, there will be some um, old world papers in here. Cause that's what I started off doing because in January I'll have a whole pack of them. Like I did with the Asian ephemera. I have a whole pack of nothing but old world papers, but there are 10 of them in this pack. So yes, you get the best of both worlds. And I just think that <clears throat> doing the text with the, with the, the marbling, it just looks so good in this journal. It's just going to give that, it's really just going to give that feeling of an old world book. So I've done, I've done them front and back as well. I've taken these from a, lot, a number of different journals and books that I have. Even this one is from a very old, this was done in 1938, typewritten. Um, 
in uh, a, a old book that I had and it was put in there glued in <laughs> after it was hand typed these are ledgers gotta always have some ledgers I think these are Dutch I believe they are oh no these aren't these are American So two of the different those, these are um, Italian, I think, and I think these are both Italian oh, and French. And these are some handwritten, um, beautiful, on sort of gossamer paper. These are all, and then I, you know, old documents. And then I threw a couple of um, old, this is handwritten, um, music scale. This is all done by hand. So I thought that was a neat one. And you can always use, we can always use music at the holidays, right? So it was, I thought it was nice to put some of this in. And this is some more very small, um, uh, they're four on a page like this. They're, they're just really interesting. And this was from a turn of the century book. So now there are 10 pages of that. So we had 10 of the marble, 10 of this. And then in this pack, I also put, um, as I did last time, things that can be used as belly bands in our book. Um, these can be tags. <clears throat> they can be used as pockets. They can be used as the small trifold books like we did. So, and in here, you'll notice there's some different patterns. Like this pattern and this pattern aren't full sheets. So there are more pattern, more marble patterns in the smaller ones. And I did that just to mix them up. So we have these, but to give you some other options so the book doesn't look like all of those 10. You know, when you start doing your tags and other things, like this one wasn't on there either. So you have two sheets of this. This is yummy. Um, these you have, just smaller versions of them. Of course, I did the stripes again. These are just nice to use to make washi tape out of. They're great just to have slivers when you want to um, just have a bit of it, you know, or just to make a strip or something for gluing down. So let's see, on this one, this one, this one is different. These are two different patterns that you don't have in the full sheets. So it just gives a variety. And then these would make nice um, tags like slender I made the slender one so that when we do these pockets I didn't really want to have a lot of fat tags because the pockets will sort of narrow down you might want to put a couple things in here so I didn't really want a wide tag so I thought that this size tag would be nice because it's not as wide it still can be writing and journaling space on the back and um, you can get few of them in a pocket so this is also a different one this is a different one, and this is a fuller piece of the strip. And then I did square pockets, and these two are different, even yet the same. So there's a lot of marbling in here. Um, and then there's some different text. These are smaller versions of the other two, but this one is a little different than, I think, than the full sheets. And then I did even smaller um, tag shapes with the different, all the different papers on here. And so these can be made of smaller tags. We can make a threefold or fourfold booklets with these. You can do a lot with these. You can take and um, cut them and fold them in half like this and make smaller booklets with pages inside to stick inside of your journal. And then the final sheet are more uh, marble papers. So this, this one, this one, this one, this, 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 all of these actually on here, you don't have full sheets of, except for the, this one you have a full sheet of. This is the only one that you have a full sheet of. All these others are not full sheets. And so just to give another variation to the pattern. So when you're mixing them against these pages here, you know, like they'll look different. They won't look all like all the same ones laying up against each other. I didn't want that. So these are all different. And that just gives different variation. And of course, if you're collaging, it just gives different pieces to, to, you know, pull from and collage. The other thing to keep in mind about my packs is that you can download the whole thing to your um, 
your hard drive but you know you can go in and, and, and pick pages at a time to print you don't have to download them at all they can you can have them on teachable and, uh, over there where you purchase them and you just go back in and select the ones that you want to print and print them so you can print multiple of these pages if you want you know more of these to work within your journal okay so that explains the pack that explains the project i know it's been 25 minutes of that but i really wanted to get the whole project laid out so you know where we're going the next few weeks because we want to have this done by december 1st right and there's going to be a lot of moving parts to this to get it done so i wanted you to know the full ball of wax basically see what you're going to need and now we're going to get into jelly printing Alrighty, so now we're back to work on uh, two um different processes and a lot of times I combine them. So we're going to um, do some glazing using the jelly plate but we're going to distress the papers first before we glaze them because once you glaze them the glazing will lock the color in it will lock all the distressing in and we don't have to worry about it um, you know uh, getting wet again or anything moving around the, the this will lock it in plus it gives it a nice um painted look it'll make these look almost like they're jelly you know been jelly printed or you know we've used the jelly printing process with them um and it just finishes it off and gives it a nice um uh, metallic sheen and everything to them so i love glazing my photocopied prints i even will glaze you guys have even seen me glaze my jelly prints that i photocopied and this glazing just makes it look like <clears throat> a jelly print so that'll be the second part of the process but we're going to start with um we're going to start first with just doing this this page now one of the things that i do you can use water just raw water or you can use a coffee tea mixture um so if you don't have these inks you'll be able just to use the coffee mixture on both of these we'll do it on I'll actually pull um, let's pull this one as well so I'll do two with the coffee so you can see how you could work them and then I'm going to show the staining on the on the um, on the text page specifically so that if you do have these, you can do them. I'm just giving you guys options. I don't want you to feel like, oh, I've got to run out and buy these. I've got to run out and do this. I'm giving you options so that whatever you have in your studio, you're going to be able to accomplish it the same. Okay. So we'll just do coffee and tea because I think it's easy for everybody to get coffee and tea. So we'll start with that. So I just take a spray bottle. Now, what you want to do is you want to spray lightly because... This is going to start bleeding. I use, if you use laser prints, then they won't bleed. Mine is an inkjet. My, my printer is an HP 5660. It's a, it's a um, laser. I mean, it's inkjet. So inkjets, when they get wet, they move around. But I happen to like that. I work with that because it gives the papers an old world look. And I like that old grungy. You guys know me. So I wanted to do that. But you've got to control it. So you don't want a whole lot of water. You don't want it puddly. None of that. And so this process I'm going to show you should help you get there without it, <clears throat> all of your color running away and being gone. Because if you do too much, it's just going to, all the color is going to bleed off the page. I like to use a tissue, a napkin, paper towel or something, and a spray bottle. So you just want to mist. See, I'm just actually just getting that much. And if you if it's any place where there's too much, there's a puddle, just dab it up. And you can see, see how it's bleeding? And see that fine mist there? Like all the little places where it hit, it just turns into these little splatter marks. And I love that. <clears throat> and it's going to fade through on the other side, but we'll just do a little bit more. And this will fade through to the front as well. But here again, once I get it down, I just sop it up. I don't want that water to just go crazy. I just want a bit. Mm-hmm. 
And the same is true. <clears throat> so the blue that's on the other side is going to bleed through to here. And some of the red is going to bleed through to the other side. And that's good. We want that. Because it's going to just change the print so much. So you see how we're starting to get a kind of the blue green bleeding through there so this is good i'm going to leave this to dry i sometimes i also take my heat gun and um just also take the heat gun and force it in because what that does is it dries it more quickly and so <laughs> something about it makes more like the darker edges around each of the blots because it just sort of i you know I guess locks the color in faster and it also kind of will crumple the page a little bit and I like that look so you can literally do this to all your papers and then go into the glazing process so I'm going to do this to all of my papers I'm not going to obviously do it on this video because it'll be uber long and you guys will you know you got the idea so I will do all my pages like this and um, you can see see how good that looks and I'll, I'll compare it to I have a page printed I have one of those pages printed so you can just do the comparison where is it? Here it is. See? So you can see the difference of... Um, this is actually a little lighter. It was printed a little lighter. But anyway, you can see the difference between... It... Uh, with the... You know, the staining versus not stained. So, and you can do that as much as you want. If you want it to bleed a little bit more, you could just keep on working it, doing it like this slowly, letting it dry until you get it right where you want it. But I, I like this. This is ready for glazing. Okay, so I'll put this to the side. Let's do the same thing with the music paper. And you can see it. It'll be even more dramatic because the paper is lighter. Okay. So right here, and so you can do this right on your your work table. I use a spray bottle, and you don't have to worry about going outside and having a big pan of stuff and doing it in the uh, in the what do you call it oven and all that. <laughs> Just do it right at your work table. Spray bottle in a in a napkin and just soap it up. You could actually stain the entire paper like this. If it were just a blank sheet, it's so easy just to, to coffee stain an entire page. So this is looking good. Now that's going to dry up. If you want it to puddle a little bit and have some darker places, you could literally just let that dry like that. Let's see if I take my... Uh... So if you want to dry it more quickly, just go ahead and get your heat tool and just really try to lock it in so that it's not you know running all over the place and when this dries this is going to be when it totally dries you'll be able to see the color difference And then we're going to, this is ready to be glazed. So that's the coffee. You can also do just straight water. Um, and we'll use the, the distress. Now once this dries, I can actually come back and the process I'm getting ready to show you with the distress oxides, you could still do that on top of this. You can, you know, you can um, layer and stack these processes. I'm just showing a lot of different ways. So to based on what you have in your studio and how much you want to do or what you want your look to look like, 
you can do in a lot of different ways. And maybe you won't do the same thing on every page. Some pages will look one way, some won't. I did select pages that already had a lot of staining and, and, and you know, the modeling on them. So you're already going to start off with a, a nice amount. So let's say if you just want to use water. What I do with that is... I start off with the frayed burlap, love, love this color, and I put it down on my, my palette, and then I just missed it. Sorry if you hear the dog barking in the background. I have a new puppy, and she's just eight weeks, and she's playful, and she's out there trying to get my other Bichon to play, and he ain't having it. He's like, wait a minute, I'm boss hog around here. Who invited you in? <laughs> it's not happy. <laughs> he's an older dog too. So he's like, no, I ain't happy. Okay, see how we're getting? Oh, love it. So here again, just put our, oops, oops. I didn't mean to use um, pumice yet. Oh, well, we'll use it since it's down there. <clears throat> I normally finish with pumice, but it's okay. So just kind of, you know, tip it in the places that you want it. It's going to overlap. You'll see. It's just going to be really nice. And you can see how it's starting to do the same thing. We're getting all those little faded pieces. But we're getting... We're getting um, all of this part of it as well. You know. So I do both sides, so we'll come back. And like I said, you can actually take and put this over top of the coffee staining also. No rules. I'm just showing different ways depending on what you may have, you know, available to you. And whatever, whatever distress you have, just play around with it on a blank sheet of paper so you can see how strong the color is. And then that way you can know how much you need to water it down. But remember, we don't want it too much water because this is going to cause it to uh, fade. I mean, to, to start, the ink start moving around. But, oh, I just love it. Look at that. So, see, already it's just, ah! Let's say glory. So I just go ahead and <laughs> when it dries, it just dries so nicely because you'll see all the spots from the oxides. I'll show you up close. And then once this dries, I come back with the, um, that's when I like to put the pumice on top because the pumice is like really chalky and gray. It just gives a real... Just a real old, you know, world vibe to it. And you don't need to overdo it. It doesn't take much, but it really just gives it. And then the paper starts wrinkling and crinkling, you know, which makes it look water damaged and all that kind of stuff. So, oops, I pulled it too far. Alrighty. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and use some of the pumice stone. And just spritz it again. I'm just really, what I'm doing is I'm spritzing it just ever so lightly. See, see, so it'll bubble up. I want it to bubble up because it's those bubbles that I'm picking up <clears throat> of color. So like right here, you see where that's just the brown? Let me just pick up a little bit of this and you'll see the difference it's gonna make. It really makes a huge difference when it's dry <clears throat> because the chalky surface of this um, pumice just really activates when it's dry. Oh, love it. 
bit more. Let's see if I just take, because the paper's already a bit wet. Yep. The main thing is we just don't want to overdo it with the water. That's why the little spritzing is really good. I like this Distress Sprayer. It really is good. I know I kind of deliberated when I was in Joann's and I saw it. I'm like, and it was like $6 or something like that. I'm like, $6 for a spray bottle. I think I can get one from the dollar store and be just fine. But I already knew that I had been doing the dollar spray ones and they stopped working. The little thing, everything happens to them. Um, so I said, you know what? I had one of the 50% off coupons and I thought, okay, well, I'll pay $3 for it. <laughs> After having it, I would definitely pay $6 for it. It's such a, a fine little mist on it. It locks so that it doesn't, you know, if you don't want it to spray, it'll lock. Um, so you don't accidentally spray anything. And it travels well. Um, and it's been working great. And it... Uh, and it, uh, it does a really nice fine mist, which I like. Versus like big, it doesn't have a big bubbles. And and what makes the difference with this technique is because I'm going to show you. See how the mist is these like little teeny, see these little, very small bubbles? That's because of this mister. Where with my, with the, uh, with this one, you see the, the, the sprays are larger. With the, basically the dollar store bottles. It just makes a larger mist. And both of them have its place. Of course, I like the larger ones as well. And with this staining, I love these small ones. So let's look over on this side. You can see how now that gray is laying on top of that brown. And see how it knocked the brown back too, so it's not as strong. So that's why I start off with the browns and then I finish with the gray. Because it will knock it back and just make it... It's good and yummy so so then you could do your papers all of your text like this and then to show you with the with the music paper that we coffee stain we can also come back with this pumice and just give this age look to it so if you do have the pumice and you want to do the coffee staining and you want to do you know the um the the distress as well then you can do both and we'll just kind of pop this down here um i'll try to put the link on amazon for the um the pumice because generally you just won't find it by going into michael's or um joann's i notice they don't always have this color but you can get it on um, Amazon, but of course, you know, they, it comes and goes there too, so. But I'll put it, for those who you just want to grab it real quick. But like I said, it's not, it's not a must in order to do this project. It's a must for me though. <laughs> I cannot do my staining without this pumice specifically. I just love that chalky gray tone that it gives. You can see how this is darkening it up some too. We're getting that really nice, um, see the darker tones are starting to lay, lay down on here. So, let's get some of this on the back side. And it's just really dabbing it, you know, we're not... And then, let this dry a little bit kind of start the drying process even if it's not I don't totally dry it with this gun but I do like to start it because it kind of gets the drying process going without it being like a little a lot of wet puddles oh this is going to be really good oh my goodness so the last thing I'm going to show you is the glazing and then you guys can be off to um to get started gives you a week to get all your pages together so what we want is all the pages done at least all 20 of them so um 
you know, do front and back. That'll give you 20 sides, 10 pages. And then you can add extra pages in if you want. If you, um, we need, how many? I think we need six to get to 25 days with one left over. Um, and then I always put three or four extra pages, five extra pages in my journal for other stuff. Because we're using the rings, you can always expand the journal, which is why I wanted to use the rings. So if you decide you want to put more pages in as the month goes on, um, once the holidays hit and you've gotten all your Christmas cards and all the different holiday cards and things like that, and you've taken pictures or whatever, you just have other stuff you want to add in, you can always add more pages. But at least get 10 pages front and back done. And it can be any combination of text, um, marbling, or whatever. Okay. So. And um, we're going to do, you can stain, if you want to go ahead and stain your, all of these papers, you can. Don't worry about the backs because these, we're going to do different things with them. So, um, if you want to hold off and we'll do these together or you could start staining them because you can always print out more. Like I started staining some here and you can see how it bleeds on the back. So I could literally take, um, if you want the back available to do, um, writing on, but we don't want it, um, you know, overly done, just spritz it with the coffee you can do the same technique using the pumice stone and so that way your back papers can be done <clears throat> your front papers have all that look at that yummy staining there all over and then that way we can use these front and back um, and some of them I'm going to actually adhere to cardstock but if you want to go ahead and do all of these pieces have at it okay now let's go ahead and do some glazing here so my favorite colors to glaze with are well it it what well, it used to be I still have tons of this champagne gold because a lot of my students at workshops have brought this to me when they when they found lots of it every we all bought out our our craft stores <laughs> about a year ago because Martha Stewart stopped the champagne gold so I still have it to use but She's making light gold, which is nice. It's still a it's still a very pale gold. This one's a little yellower. This is paler, which is nice. So you can still get this one. And then the Deco Arts makes this champagne gold. And I love this one. This has been my all-time favorite. This one's champagne gold. And you can get these at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and these are like $2 a bottle, you know, $1.40 or $1.69 or something like that. So they're inexpensive <coughs> craft paints, but actually these are the best for, um, they're the best for glazing because you don't want one with, you don't want, like I don't use the Goldens or the Arteza that have lots of pigment in it because it's going to be too strong for glazing. It'll just kind of like cover up, basically it'll cover up your, your print and we don't want it covered. So we just want a very thin layer of color, like almost you can't see it is what you want. And it's best to just to work with, with small layers, thin layers and build up than to try to do it all at one time. So... I'll lay this down. This video is going to be an hour for sure. And see some of the stuff that's on the plate. I had some stuff down in the plate. See it starts picking up the, the old stuff that's on the plate, which I love it. That just adds to the, the look of the print. But see the difference? Like right off, immediately it looks like a jelly print. Where this part down there is just flat. And this has its places. <clears throat> but when I'm working... And um, the way we're doing with journals and, you know, this kind of thing, I like to get a thin layer of um, paint on and just glaze it. It just makes the paper more durable. It, it just gives it more of a, you know, a created piece. So we'll just get this bit here.
and then we'll flip it over and get this other side. So we'll glaze both sides. Just great. Look at that. And this this is the Martha Stewart light light gold. See, it's just a very light. It gives it a nice shimmer. And this is nice for this holiday um, piece. And you don't have to have the pages fully. Like, it doesn't have to have, like, see there's sections where there's just a little bit of um, paint and, and hardly anything there. So it doesn't have to be a full out um, covering. You just kind of want it to look a little... You know, a little bit here and there. It's going to mostly cover it, but you're not trying to overdo it. I don't, I don't mind those patches. I just think it adds to the interest of the paper and the, and the print. So we're going to have a little bit of everything in here. Some staining, some jelly printing, some coffee and eco staining. So that's done. There's a little section right here that I think I might just see if I can pick some stuff up. And um, just do a little bit more. So we're going to do these. So you're going to do this for all your pages. All the pages that you're putting in your book. You're going to do this. Okay. All righty. So that one's done. So now let's do one that's been marbled so you guys can see that. So I'll use this champagne gold too so you can see it. This is like a more of a platinum. It's kind of more of a platinum gold. It gives a different coloring effect. So you could use both of them. Um, like I'll, I'll mix them up throughout my, um, pages. I'll use a little bit of, of both. Sometimes I put a little bit of both on each, you know, in sections. So it's not all the same color. See that? It just locks it in. It just, it just gives it all, you know, right away you get that nice little sheen. You get extra little junk off your plate on there so just ask the interest of the print just makes it you know so i'll um so let me do this next to it so you can see the difference there's just a little slight difference but both of them are nice if you can only find one then have at it if you can't find any of the either of these the main thing is when you're in craft store try you know they have a little section so you can try them out just take a little bit on your finger and rub it on the white sheet that they provide there. Or I just bring my little, my own little sampling pad with me. Because most places will let you just kind of see what the color's like. And, um, and then the main thing is just, you want one that's going to be very light in metallic color. You don't want it to be a very thick, you know, um, highly pigmented color. Okay, so see I put... I mix these and it's almost like they're, there's subtle differences when you do them on a neutral paper, but on a color paper like this, you don't really, you don't see a lot of the difference. So they're both good. Either one that you can find. So let's do the back side of this. And, uh, and that's the glazing. So this is what you'll do to all of your papers. And so next week when we meet, all your pages will be distressed and aged and glazed. And then from there, we'll go to how we fold them. And uh, probably we'll fold them and think about covers as well, the book cover itself. So that means that find yourself your book boards. Like I showed you mine, I was just using the artist, one of my old covers from my journal that I take off once I read this any old book you know go to the goodwill or the dollar store anywhere just get a book approximately about this size it can be even a little um let me just get my so this one is going to be basically five 
by eight, but you can go as small as this one, which is five by seven. So it's somewhere between five by seven, five by eight is a good range. And you can also just cut your boards to that size. Or if you have a book board, let's say you can't find any small books. You already have an old book. You, we can cut the covers down. We can just cut it to a five by seven or five by eight. So, and I may even trim this one down some myself. It just depends when I go to fold the papers. So this just want, want you to have an idea of the size of the board, but don't cut them yet because we're going to cut them together once. Now this whole process is going to take us about three weeks. So just in time for the beginning of December. Just going to get a little bit more on this page here. And, uh, and then we're done. I release you guys to, to go to your studios and get started. If you want this pack, it, as always, the November printables will be um, in the description box below. I know sometimes you guys say you don't see the links. You have to look in the, um, just look in the description section for this video and it'll say Robin's, you know, jelly team prints, that kind of thing. And then you'll, you'll see them. So I like to just clean up the plate and get some of this extra stuff off of it. Because I like all this overprinting. See this extra bit that I picked up off the plate? I like all of that on my print. That's why I like to do the jelly part. Jelly glazing. Because it's a way to pick up a lot of good stuff without it being a full print. And you can still use your, your own um, photocopy papers. Alrighty, so let's look at what we have here. This is just the coffee staining. See as it dried. Look at all that nice color we got there bleeding through. And uh, so this is going to be ready for glazing. This one we glazed already. So we have the color that came from the staining all over here. And then we've locked it in with the glazing. And that just looks good. And then the same thing with our, our prints. It's just going to give it an old world look to the book and a painterly look as well okay so there we have it i hope you enjoyed today if you like the video please thumb it up and if you um are new to, to my channel please subscribe and notify that hit that bell that says you want to be notified all the time because recently um YouTube has changed uh, their algorithms again so they used to send everybody an email when the videos were live, but they stopped that now. You don't get the videos any longer. And I've noticed a lot of times people don't come to the videos like right away on Saturday like they used to. It'd be Monday or Tuesday because you guys haven't gotten used to the fact probably or don't even know that they're not sending the emails anymore. You probably thought, oh, I just missed the email. But they're not sending them any longer. But if you do that bell, notification bell, then you will get up, you know, it will notify you on your phone or different places like that. I'm not sure. But anyway, just so you guys know that. Oh, this project is going to be so much fun. Look how these pages are going to look in our books. Oh, so, okay. I'll let you guys go so you can get started. Love you all. Have a great weekend and I will see you again next Saturday. And like I said, all this, this whole pack, 27 pages of it will be in the link. $6 as always. And I will see you guys again soon. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.